Ladies and gentlemen, this is Zach Moonshine with Metal Devastation Radio. Right now on the phone with me, I have Jason Walton from the bands Agalock and Self Spiller. What's going on, Jason? Not much. How you doing, man? Doing all right, man. So uh, tell everybody out there, man, what's going on right now in the world of Jason Walton? Well, I've got a bunch of stuff going on. Uh, I'm currently prepping for two Agalock tours over the summer. One on the West Coast that starts next week. And then uh, we're spending a month in Europe uh, starting in July. Um, other than that, I've got uh, this reissue of my Festival LP that was just just released. And I've also got a uh, debut solo 7-inch that is being released in June. So, yeah, I've been pretty busy. Very cool, man. So the self spiller thing that's actually that's actually old. Yeah, uh, it was actually originally released in 2012 on TV, um, but it didn't really get a proper release, and not very many people heard it. Um, so I'm pretty excited that uh, they got a proper release on uh, LP last month. Yeah, that's cool, man. Well, for people out there that don't know, can you tell us a little bit about the history of uh, Agalock and self spiller? <laughs> Yeah, uh, Agalock formed in about 1995, um, and yeah, we've been doing that thing with that for, I guess, 20 years now. Um, and Self Spiller, I started about 2005, uh, composing the material for that. It was a really, really long and tedious process, um, and yeah, I didn't finish that until 2012. And at this point, we only have the one, the one album, but uh, I'm currently working on a new one. As far as the differences between the two bands, how would you describe that? Uh, night and day difference. Um, <laughs> Agalock is a full working band that, uh, you know, everybody has their input. Um, Self Spiller is a weird conglomeration of different pieces of music that I've collected from people all over the world and kind of hammered and puzzled together and pieced together. Um, Agalot kind of fits into a dark metal genre where Self Spiller fits into a avant-garde black metal genre, I guess. Uh, it's very cut and paste, kind of John Zornath. Um, yeah, I'm not sure they could be further apart from each other, really. Very cool, man. Now, uh, as far as you, like, what what would you say got you into music as far as, like, influences and stuff? What got you started? Well, when I was about five or six, uh, my cousin started playing me things like Ozzy Osbourne, uh, Judas Priest, ACDC, things like that. And I fell in love immediately. And my dad always played me things like Blue Mr. Calk and Red Zeppelin. And so I really, I grew up surrounded by music and especially, uh, hard rock and metal music. And then from there, I kind of, kind of got into, into more punk stuff like Black Flag, Big Candies, and the Ramones. Um, and then after I was into that, in middle school, I started getting really into death metal. And that was when Parkus released Symphonies of Sickness. And we're talking 89, 90, so like really pinnacle of, of, uh, of death metal. But heavily into death metal. And um, in the early 90s, I started discovering black metal. And yeah, I've always been searching for music since then. But it's just been a, a constant in my life since I was about five or six. Oh, yeah, man. Now, as far as the band names, uh, how did you come up with that? Like, uh, how did you come up with Agalock and then Self Spiller? Well, Agalock is, you know, it's kind of John's beast. Um, he's the, the vision behind Agalock. Um, but Agalock is, it's a resinous wood that's made into incense. Uh, so it really fits with our, with our themes and our aesthetic. Um, Self Spiller is actually, it's a strange term. I believe it's a kind of, I think it's Japanese. I think it was translated from Japanese, but it refers to someone who kills themselves. They call it a self-spiller. 
uh, not so far away from San Francisco and the West Coast and the Pacific Northwest you know, in particular have always had a really strong metal scene. Um, you know, from Wolves in the Throne Room to Eight Bells to Alder Baron. I mean, there's just there's tons of different bands here from Doom to Black Metal. Uh, you know, the whole quote-unquote Cascadian scene. So, yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on here. Awesome, man. And as far as, uh, like, your live show, for anybody out there who hasn't seen you guys live, what would you say about that? Uh, for Adolf? Either, well, either either band. Yeah, well, if that band doesn't play live, that would be a logistical okay. nightmare. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, Adelok Live is it's quite a bit different than record. Um, we're not necessarily concerned about playing the songs exactly like they are on the record. We like to interpret them to a live situation. So even if you're super familiar with our material, you necessarily wouldn't be that familiar with our live versions of those songs. Um, I think we have a lot more energy on stage. And uh, yeah, I think it's, it's pretty dynamic. Um, most of the time when people come see our shows, they say it's not exactly what they expected. Very cool, man. Yeah, I've seen the DVD that you guys put out, and that's pretty cool, man. It definitely... Uh it reminds me sort of of like early Pink Floyd in a way because you guys are just it seems like you guys are all really into the instruments and, and uh, just very much about the music. Yeah, and that's you know how it's always been. Um, we started as a studio band first and we didn't play live even one time until after the mantle was released. So it was always music first for us. And yeah, I think that comes through in our, our live performances as well. Very cool, man. Well, speaking of live uh, performances, you guys have any tour dates or what kind of plans do you guys have for the future? I know you were saying something about that earlier. Yeah, uh, next week we head out for two weeks on the West Coast. We're going through the Northwest, down through California, Arizona, up to Idaho, back up to Washington, and um uh, British Columbia, and then end of July we had to Europe for a month, um, so we're going to be visiting a lot of places there, um, doing I think 30 some shows in Europe, and then uh, summer is our, pretty much our busy time for live performances, um, and then after that we'll probably take a hiatus for a little bit like we usually do. Hell yeah man, badass. Well, uh, do you guys have a web page or something where people can go uh, check out merch and stuff like that? Yeah, the, the Agalock web page is just agalock.org. And on there, there's a web store where you can find Agalock merch, you can find self spoiler merch, and you can find um, other related merch. Uh, and then there is... The label that released the self story record is called Varia Records. That's V A R I A Records. And you can find them online too and order that self story LP. Right on, man. Well, dude, I'm about out of questions for you. Is there anything else you want to add to let the people know? I don't think so. Just uh, thanks for your time. <laughs> Thank you, man. Uh, well, I, I do. I, I got to give a little shout out to the ear split, man, because they, uh, they hook this up and they always, they're really cool, man. They hook up a lot of cool stuff. They're good promoters. Definitely living days and I go way back. So yeah, good friends. Hell yeah, man. Well, before I let you go, I got to get you, got to get you to make a station tag. Cool. Okay. All right. Whenever you're ready, just say something like, this is Jason Walton from Agalock and self spiller. And you are listening to metal devastation radio where metal reigns supreme. This is Jason Walton from Agalock and Self Story. You are listening to Zach Moonshine on the Metal, metal Devastation Radio Show, where metal reigns supreme. <laughs> Fuck yeah, man. Thanks a lot. All right, thanks a lot. All right, Jason. Will you take it easy, man, and uh, hopefully we'll see you around soon, all right? All right, thank you. See you later. All right, later, later man. All right, bye.